In my previous video, which you can see the link to below, I talked about the ancillary bits and pieces that you'd need to go with your iPad and GarageBand in order to make it into a fully fledged recording studio. So today I'm going to make a brief recording showing these ancillary bits and pieces and how they are going to make your GarageBand recordings much more expressive and dynamic than perhaps just with the iPad alone. Let's have a look. Okay, so I've got GarageBand open and I've opted for the drums, not drummer. Now, I've, the reason for drums is that I can play them in using the keyboard. Now, the keyboard is connected to this via the audio interface via MIDI, which is the old protocol I talked about in the last video. That means that any keyboard made in the last 41 years that has a MIDI output on it will communicate with this. So any keyboard lying about, it might be dusty or it might not be useful for anything, but it will be useful with this. So I'm going to just record a little uh, eight bars. And there we go. So there's my eight bar drum loop. So I've just played it in on the keyboard, which means you can get a bit more dynamic range than you may be able to from the, the drums on the keypad. And of course the keypad, you can get some dynamics, but they're less predictable. It's a bit easier with a keyboard. So now I've done that, I'm gonna go back to the beginning and I'm going to record a bass part. Now you can record the bass line on the... Um, you can either record them on the keyboard or on the fretboard. So you've got a, a way of recording your bass. Let's see what happens with that. Now I'm just going to copy that part rather than just record the eight bars. So I'm just going to trim it off there and then uh, copy, go to bar five and click paste. There we are. At the same time, I'm just going to take that down there and I'm also going to make it so that it is definitely an eight bar loop, not anything more. So I'm just going to make sure that is eight, nine bars, it says eight should be eight, there we are. Because I don't want to have that nine bars of silence, uh, one bar of silence at the end. Okay, so that's really showing what the keyboard can do. Now, if you want to plug anything else in, like a guitar, you'll obviously need your jack lead into the front of your audio interface. Now, I've already got my mic, which I'm going to use in a minute, uh, connected to input one. So I'm going to connect up to input two here, and then connect my guitar up. And then we'll need to press the high Z button on the front of the audio interface. And this is to allow your guitar to be matched, the pickups to be matched properly to your audio interface. So I'm going to click plus and go to guitar amplifier. So I'm just gonna have a clean sound. Now you won't hear anything yet. You need to enable monitoring. There's a little jack plug at the top right there, which allows you to uh, to monitor. I'm just going to turn that down a bit. This a bit. Ah, and I also need to turn it on to input two here, so that I can hear my guitar. Because at the moment, you can hear the microphone. <laughs> is traditional also to tune your guitar up. Now at the same time you've got a guitar tuner here. How useful is that? There we go. E.
All these useful bits and pieces with GarageBand, massively useful. Everything's in the box, it's absolutely fantastic. Okay, so going back to the start. Now I'm monitoring through the iPad at the moment and I can't hear any delay at all. No latency at all, it's absolutely brilliant. On the front of the sound card, my signal level did occasionally go red, so I'm just going to turn it down a bit. There's loads of gain on here, so you can connect a guitar that's got cheaper pickups to this with ease. So, here we are. There we go, it's a guitar part. I could even, I could go back to my main page. There's 32 tracks here, so you can record what you want. However, be careful. We don't want to add too much, but I'm actually going to duplicate this track, which will allow me to retain the settings that I had last time, so you don't have to go all out and sort of uh, make sure that the, the um, but monitoring, you have to switch on because it's guarding against feedback. Maybe I could try a different guitar amp. Clean combo, let's have a look. Chrome clean. Maybe a different pickup. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so going back to the start then. There we go. Okay, so we've got eight bars. I'm just doing this really quickly because otherwise we'll be here a week. And I'm just showing you what you can do with these bits and bobs. So, um, keyboard. We've got our keyboard here. If we have a piano. You get much better range. And it's also a bit harder to play chords, but they've thought of everything. You can do stuff in the box on the online keyboard, but or on screen keyboard. But I'm going to just record a few chords. do. So we're finished with the instruments. Now I'm going to go to the microphone. So having a mic like this, I mean, you can hear what you can get out of this. It's amazing. For 30 pounds. <laughs> that's, yeah, as I said, that's a, just a takeaway. Or you can have a mic in your studio and be a bit healthier besides. So I'm just going to click on audio recorder here. Now this is where you record just from your microphone. You can use it with guitar as well. I'm actually going to set this to fun and clean, which means that actually it doesn't do any, I know it's not really fun to have no effects, but actually that's how you get to the default, sort of wiping all your effects. So the channel at the moment, you can see one, two, 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 two. It's kind of responding to my voice here. So I'm just going to turn it up slightly. One, two, two, okay. So, you can have the monitoring on at the same time. Hey, hey, hey. You can add some reverb while you're recording if you like, but I'm not gonna do that just now because I've just set it, set the channel up ready to go. So, here we go. that this ladder's about to fall. I'm gonna do that again. So, just going back to here, if you wanna delete something, you just click on it and delete, and then you can go again. Ooh, 
writings on the wall Very superstitious Ladders about to fall Okay, so it's a slightly different version of superstition. That's fine. So now you've got your mic set up, you can do a load of backing vocals. So I'm just going to listen back to this. Ooh, on the wall. Now, perhaps I want to hear that vocal a little bit clearer when I'm doing my backing vocals. So I'm going to go into song and track settings. I'm going to apply a compressor. Now what that does is it squashes the dynamic range and allows you to push what remains louder than the track. That's the principle of it. And I can also put a load of reverb on it. Ooh, riding's on the wall. That'll do me. Okay, so I'm going to add another track, just audio recorder the same settings, fun and clean. I'm going to set the monitor. Sometimes you don't want to hear what you're singing. You can make that decision. So actually I'm going to, I'm not going to record with the monitor because I, I want to hear that lead vocal. Ooh, riding's on the wall. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it at that, just for the purposes of this demo. Now, what I'm gonna do, and this is something that is very, very, very well worth considering, is actually to record the same thing three times, not twice. Well, you can double track if it's a lead line, but if you think of a symphony orchestra, one flute will play the tune or all three, but you never hear two playing it because you need that sense of ensemble. So I'm just going to do exactly the same thing again. Riding's on the wall. And once again. Ooh, riding's on the wall. Okay, so I'm just going to record another backing vocal part, but you can keep adding tracks. It's so capable. You just keep going. Absolutely brilliant. Okay. Riding's on the wall. Now I could record three of those, but I'm not going to because actually I get all the stereo effect and the chorusing from the top part only. So I can add another part, another harmony part. Ooh, riding's on the wall. And there we are. So. I've got my, basically, I've got my MIDI and my audio on there using the keyboard and a guitar and this microphone through my audio interface. So when I'm just mixing back now, I'm just going to make this so that the top, the first top vocal part is on the left, the middle part stays in the middle and the right hand side goes or well, the bottom one goes to the right. And then I could maybe slightly divide the, uh, the bottom two parts between the speakers, as it were. I'm going to put a little bit of reverb on all of these tracks. You can customize the reverb as well. You know, it's, uh, you can set that, but the default is amazing. Ooh, riding's on the wall. I could even duplicate those parts and put them on the second half as well. It's fine to cut and paste. <laughs> Some people might say it's cheating, but actually, as long as you've got parts that are different that go across the top of those, you won't be able to hear that they're cut and pasted necessarily, if you're good at hiding stuff. So there it is. There is a session on GarageBand using this ancillary kit here, which really added together, you can get for under 200 pounds dollars. You can always 
find or make your own leads. You can, you know, a guitarist who's out gigging will have their own cables anyway. And of course, I haven't mentioned the speaker system that you might want to mix on. I'm doing everything on headphones, but that's good enough. You can get a reasonable mix on headphones. The thing is, is not to spend too long on them because your ears get tired and suddenly you put it on a pair of speakers and you go, oh, I don't like that at all. But that's, you know, you can add things to this. The audio interface and the and garage band, those are the two main bits. You could change the microphone if you want to go slightly further sort of quality wise with your mic, but for 30 pounds, I mean, after all, the music is what matters. And if you do a good performance, the chances are that cheap kit is not going to sound cheap, whereas it might be the other way around. If you've got expensive kit and you know you haven't done a good performance, that's worse. But there we are. There is your GarageBand setup and a little demo just to show that what you can do with this.